In today's video, I am going to be talking about the different kind of resistance that a vessel faces during its movement at sea. The power required to move a ship through the water depends on the propulsive efficiency and on the total resistance of the ship. The resistance is actually a complex function of the displacement of the vessel, that is the weight of the vessel, the shape of the vessel and the speed of the vessel. I will talk about the five types of resistance that a vessel faces during its movement. The first one is frictional resistance. The friction between the water and the ship's shell is the cause of this type of resistance. The water in the boundary layer is accelerated by the ship speed dragged by the molecular friction. The boundary layer is the layer of the water immediately below the keel of the vessel or the bottom of the vessel. Now, when the water in the boundary layer is accelerated by the ship's speed and dragged by the molecular friction, this boundary layer is thicker and the resistance is higher when the shell is fouled. The frictional resistance is the smallest directly after delivery of the ship. During the ship's lifetime, the roughness of the hull normally increases due to paint layers covering older paint layers, damage, corrosion, etc. This results in a gradual drop in speed of the vessel and efficiency. The second type of resistance is the pressure or form resistance. Now what you see on your screens here is a supplier vessel without much of a bulbous bow. The ship's momentum pushes the water aside at the bow and as a result, the pressure of the water increases. This increase in pressure will also take place aft. The pressure will drop where the boundary layer is released. The third type of resistance is the wave resistance. You can see here is a container ship with a very well formed bulbous bow. Now the wave resistance is a result of the wave systems along the hull that originate from the differences in pressure. On certain ships, the use of a bulbous bow at the bow can significantly decrease the wave making resistance. The bulb generates its own wave system which is designed to interfere negatively with the ship's wave system. Hence the two wave systems then neutralize each other. So the bulbous bow generates its own wave system and the ship's wave system created by the waves at sea, they neutralize each other. The fourth type of resistance is the added resistance in waves. This type of resistance is caused by the pitching, heaving, heaving and rolling of the ship during rough seas, stormy weather or even swells, heavy swells. The fifth type of resistance is called the air resistance and that depends on the vertical that is above the water line which varies with the draft. Resistance components as mentioned in uh, added resistance are variable and depending on wave direction and wind direction as experienced by the ship. With regard to frictional resistance, the newest hull paint, the so-called non-stick paint, silicon based, which does not allow fouling to hold on to the paint, keeps the frictional resistance constant throughout the lifetime of the paint. This paint can also be applied on the propeller, resulting in a smooth hull and propeller. And in this way, keeping the hull efficiency constant. Speed does not drop with time passing and the fuel consumption of the engine remains constant. It is, however, a very expensive system, only paying off on large fast ships. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about in detail about the propulsion system, the propellers, and I'll also talk about the fouling and the page systems used on the ship to reduce these resistance that is developed over a ship's lifetime. I hope you found this video useful and as a base for the further videos to come. Thank you for watching. Bye. Now guys, uh, I was talking about the ships with the bulbous bow and without the bulbous bow. As you can see in your screen here, rather on your screen here, this is actually a supplier vessel that I showed you earlier uh, without uh, a well-formed bulbous bow. Now, if you look at this vessel here, 
uh, and compare it to the oil tankers or bulk carriers, car carriers or even container ships where you will be seeing that they have a very clearly and a well-formed bulbous bow. Uh, this bulbous bow prevents an increase in pressure or water pressure near the bow. The improved streamline of the ship's underwater body reduces a wave system around the ship, as you can see here. Now in suppliers and uh, dredger vessels, I'll show you the dredger vessel in the next slide as well. There is a large wave system that is present around the ship. Now if the rate of flow of water or even air is higher, then the pressure will be lower compared to the pressure in parts of the water where the rate of flow is lower. All right, so here you can see this is a dredger without a much well-formed bulbous bow. So in waves, water in a trough has a higher speed than water in a wave top. I think there is some relation to Bernoulli's theorem here as well. All right, so you can see how the presence of a bulbous bow has an effect in counteracting the resistance of the uh, resistance that a vessel faces. All right, so I thought before I end this video, I should uh, just include this discussion here as well, because uh, you can see in my slides here, I was emphasizing on the presence of a bulbous bow or the absence of a bulbous bow on a vessel. And uh, I thought I did not explain it very clearly uh, as to what is the importance of it in counteracting the resistance faced by the water and the air by ships when at sea. Thanks guys.